Welcome to Colorado Homes and Lifestyles, where style comes home. This recording is brought to you by Aftersight, and it is intended to be used solely by individuals who are blind or have low vision. Thank you for joining us for the January-February 2022 Colorado Homes and Lifestyles, The Remodel Issue. My name is Jerry Jangra. From the editor, The Power of New, I'm looking forward to ringing in the New Year's clean slate full of possibilities. In this first issue of 2022, we're introducing several new departments. Variations on a theme from Colorado Homes and Lifestyles, former editor Kate Myers, who has retired to pursue her love of art curation. Kate takes us on a themed art tour. Check out her cloud pics on page 36. I'm delighted to work with Kate and feature her finds in CH&L. Checking in is our new travel department dedicated to showcasing our great state's fabulous hotels and resorts, often only a short drive away. In this issue, editor-at-large Rebecca Gart visits Devil's Thumb Ranch, a dreamy winter wonderland, with something for every picky member of your family. Also new, our back page, Moments, captures a moment in Colorado, an exhibit, performance, or in this case, the debut of the Denver Art Museum's expanded and reimagined campus, including the restoration of the Lanny and Sharon Martin Building, with eight levels of art galleries and the newly constructed Anna and John J.C. Welcome Center. More new at CH&L as our parent company, Wisner Media, continues to grow, shifting roles to accommodate our growing stable of Colorado publications. We've Got Colorado Covered is the new slogan for Colorado biz, Colorado expression, mountain living, and Colorado homes and lifestyles. Elizabeth Hamilton expands her role as group publisher for three titles, CEML and CH&L. Veteran Mountain Living Art Director Lonetta Vigliotti adds Creative Director to her title, ML and CH&L, and My Position Changes Editor-in-Chief of both Mountain Living and Colorado Homes and Lifestyles. As we enter the new year, I'm focusing on gratitude for my family, my health, and work that I love. I look forward to hearing from you and wish you a healthy and happy new year. Darla Warden... Editor-in-Chief Snuggle Up, Cozy Blankets, Seasonal Fair, and a Funky Design Shop for All, written by Rebecca Gart. Eat, taking cues from their stints at acclaimed Colorado restaurants Safta and Blackbelly, husband-wife duo Lisa and Patrick Balcom, have opened a new farm-to-table spot called Faro in Niwot's Cottonwood Square that specializes in seasonal, hyper-local ingredients. Most of their produce is sourced from Boulder County farms within a five-mile radius of the restaurant, resulting in an ever-changing menu of a dozen or so small plates meant to share with the entire table. The Balcoms, who don't publish their menu online because of its constantly rotating nature, offer a variety of dishes from Longmont meat producer Buckner Family Ranch, along with a strong selection of vegetable-laden seasonal offerings. Diners can indulge in a six-course tasting menu paired with a sommelier-supported wine program overseen by Carmen Haywood, most recently of Tavernetta, or order a la carte off the regular menu. Prices range from $12 to $24. Open seven days for dinner. Faro, 7916 Niwot Road. Niwot, dot com. Browse. Part warehouse shopping and part design collective, Modern Nomad is an immersive experience functioning much like a three-dimensional living magazine, says owner and Colorado native Becky Miller. Located in a former auto body shop in Rhino at 29th and Larimer, the 5,500-square-foot design mecca features an array of sustainable products and clothing for lifestyle, home, garden, and body. She takes pride in choosing 
only women-owned businesses for her space, most with a nod to social responsibility. Currently, eight vendors display their products in the open-air market, including Awakening, a progressive sex and wellness boutique. Home Fill, a refillable container store for household items, and Shop Thrift Cult, a boutique featuring clothing and accessories from the late 1950s through the 90s. Miller offers workshops, events, art exhibits, and speakers with an emphasis on supporting local businesses. Modern Nomad, 2963 Larimer Street, Denver. ModernNomadDenver.com. Finds. Booked. The Captain of Calm. In his new monograph, designer Sean Henderson shares his techniques to create serene, non-plus spaces that wow. When you count bold-faced names like Will Ferrell and Octavia Spencer as your clients, you can officially call yourself a success. But designer Sean Henderson had another grand vision for himself and wasn't going to rest until he achieved it. I had always had this goal of having a book by the time I turned 50, says Henderson, who launched his namesake firm in 2003. It was an important milestone in my life and career. Mission accomplished. His first monograph, Interiors in Context, Monticelli Press, November 2021, is out and features projects from Aspen to his own country place in Hillsdale, New York. We chatted with Henderson about why it's worth seeking out authentic vintage furniture over reproductions and how he tweaks his upholstery choices for Colorado clients. Tell me how you got your start in the illustrious design world. I got a BFA in interior design from the Rochester Institute of Technology and worked for three different design firms. I think it's so important for people to apprentice and to really learn the trade. What are some of the things you learned in those early jobs? Everything. Everything. I really learned how to deal with clients and vendors. One of the things that I was fortunate to experience was learning from amazing gallery owners and antiques dealers about the history of design and understanding the quality of design and what that meant. So much of what's out there is derivative of design, and it's unfortunate, because I think that there's amazing stuff out there if you know where to find it and what to look for. For example, there was a picture of a newly made chair on Instagram that was more expensive than the actual original chair. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Why not have the original? Antiques are great from a sustainability point of view, too. What are the reasons that it's worth seeking out the original? It's so important for a home to have a layer of vintage furniture whenever possible because it tells a story and adds a warmth that is hard to achieve otherwise. In order for a space to feel super warm and inviting and serene and comfortable, I want that extra layer and those little nuances that vintage furniture provides. New spaces can provide that, but it puts a little more onus on the architecture and on the materials choices and then the execution of both of those things. When you have the perfect storm, an amazing architect, amazing finishes, and an amazing contractor who can do all of that, then you could have a space that feels that way. And then you can kind of do whatever you want with furniture. What is your hallmark as a designer? I think the one word that my clients use a lot to refer to my projects is serene. I think there's a dialogue between what my interior feels like and looks like and what is happening architecturally. The end result is a space that feels super relevant and appropriate. How do you create serenity? So many people feel like they just need to jam full. Part of what I like to bring to the table is doing just the right amount of furniture. I'll custom design a 10-foot or 12-foot long sofa to make the space feel a little more united so I don't have two sofas in a room. That's brilliant. I don't like to have a lot of elements in a space and want to introduce elements that feel appropriate in the aesthetic sense, too. So if it is like an upstate country house having a little bit of Americana in there, like a Windsor chair. I'm a huge fan of wingback chairs, and those to me are real statement pieces. I think they're super comfortable and inviting. 
And you can skew many different ways with that. You can go Italian mid-century, or you can go more American, too, or more English-American, which feels slightly more traditional. Having those elements in a room is where furniture becomes really kind of architectural and sculptural. When you were working in Colorado, were there a couple things that you did here that you might not have done in New York? There's a little bit more of an emphasis on chunky, warmer textiles, velvets, mohairs, and shearlings, lots of nubby fabrics. Some of the homes that I've worked on in Aspen are a little more modern, and I think it's nice to have things that really convey that extra layer of warmth in the depth of winter. For one project in particular, I'm thinking of this living room rug, a very thick braided wood ru- wool rug in brownish gray that is super beautiful. You often use a lot of stunning sculptural furniture. How do you make it comfortable? It's a little subjective. Comfort means very different things to different people. I think that's why we end up doing a lot of custom sofas, because my clients all like to sit differently. I personally like all types of sculptural chairs. It's fun to have them in a room. But the ones that I like the most are chairs that you can take a nap in, the chairs that have the perfect pitch that are soft and comfortable. Speaking of taking a nap, what about upholstery? Do you have a favorite? It really just depends. Soft and fuzzy is great, but I also like a tailored wool felt. It really depends on the specific piece of furniture and how the fabric will best show off the lines of that furniture. When did you know you were a designer? Were you constantly rearranging your room as a child? Oh, my God, I was always rearranging the whole house. It was hilarious. I seriously was obsessed totally obsessed. And I always knew that I wanted to be a designer from a young age, and I was super lucky. I grew up in upstate New York, a small town called Menands, which is just outside of Albany. Nice. And so your family was fine with you rearranging the whole house? Oh, yeah. I'm the youngest of six kids, so by the time I came along, my parents were exhausted. They were like, do whatever you want. Artfully designed. Downsizing turns into creative curating. Story by Alicia Rodriguez. When her longtime clients decided to downsize from a seven-bedroom home in Hilltop to a one-bedroom condo downtown, Nadia Watts knew their primary focus would be layout. We started with the interior walls and how the rooms were working, says Watts. The homeowners, Candy Roberts and her husband, know how to envision what a space could look like. She is an architect, he is a developer, and they're both involved in historic preservation. Because the couple collects arts and antiques, Watts didn't have to worry about finding the right pieces for the condo. Instead... She needed to become part curator and part magician to make their treasures fit. Watts designed the kitchen and dining area with the existing table in mind, a custom mahogany table made by a local artist. In the bedroom, Watts reused two existing side tables as nightstands. They are the perfect size, but they were actually not made for that space, she says. Because Watts had previously worked with the Robertses, she knew that much of their art and furniture has sentimental value. They have collected art by artists they know, inherited antiques from both sides of the family, and purchased some iconic designs throughout their careers. The black arachnid ceiling light in the living room is such a piece. We have torn pages out of magazines for years, Watts says, and that was one of those special pieces for them. Achieving the right mix of old and new required a lot of thought. Watts painted the entire space in soothing neutral white dove by Benjamin Moore so the artwork and architectural details of the building could stand out. We are always conscious of the balance between pieces that are interesting and ornate with pieces that are calmer and don't take away from the design of the space, says Watts. While the residence is well-planned, it's designed to evolve. For some people and some designers, this goes here, and that's it, forever, Watts says. The Robertses move their art around. A painting will start in one place, and we love it. Then we may change the orientation of the room and move the painting. Art is such a wonderful way to change a space. 
Six Tips for a Smart, Happy Home Remodel Written by Allison Gwynn When doing a home remodel, the designers at Kimberly Timmons Interiors, KTI, start by doing a walkthrough and getting a client's entire wish list, says Nikki Holt, KTI's Residential Studio Design Director. Typically, the firm will go in and take a house down to the exterior walls, reworking the entire interior layout. The biggest difference between a new build and a remodel is that a remodel is like working with a puzzle, Holt says. How can you get spaces to flow and function in completely different ways than their original design intent? It can turn into quite a fun design challenge. Here are Holt's top tips for executing a successful remodel. Number one, hire an experienced general contractor. You can spend good money on a great design firm, but if you don't have a skilled professional builder to bring their vision to life, you'll end up with a completely different result, Holt says. A good builder will provide an accurate bid up front, a solid timeline, and seamless service throughout. Number two, Go classic on the main architectural elements. Choose classic designs for big-ticket items like cabinetry, flooring, or fireplace design, advises Holt, and save trendy for easily changeable areas like wall coverings, paint color, lighting, and furniture. Having that classic backdrop allows you to continually evolve the space for years to come without having to rip things out, she says. Number three. Build in a few wow focal points. Avoid the urge to overload your remodel with too many wow moments. It really takes away from the overall design when you try to throw in too many focal points, says Holt. Pare down to a few, a grand staircase, an amazing fireplace design, or a really funky powder room. Or go really big in the kitchen and leave the rest as neutral complements to those focal features. Number four. If it's a sizable home remodel, move out during construction. If clients stay in the house, they will be living in a construction zone and will see every little hiccup that happens, things that we take care of, says Holt. We advise they find a short-term rental. It makes life so much easier. Number five. Consider using commercial-grade materials. At KTI, we use high-end commercial-grade materials all the time for busy families with kids. I think a lot of people think these materials will be corporate or stuffy, but there are such great commercial products now. They might be a little more money up front, but they will last a family a lifetime. Number six, don't forget about the exterior. It's the first thing people see when they're entering your home, and having a disconnect between the exterior and interior will feel odd, says Holt. When they flow seamlessly together, your home will really stand out. Great Bones, a dated and dull Littleton home becomes a light-filled, colorful abode. Story by Allison Gwynn. The remodel of this 1995 Littleton house was a bad news, good news undertaking. The bad news. When the clients moved in, the house was dated and dull. It was all original finishes, the homeowner remembers. Nothing had been touched, and there was carpet throughout. The good news. The home had great bones, and the new owners loved their new little hidden gem of a neighborhood. So they began by doing some basic cosmetic work and turned to a friend with a great sense of style to help pick out hardwood flooring and paint colors. Pretty quickly, they hit a wall. The house needed more polish and pop, and they needed help achieving those. That's where Lauren Winter, senior interior designer at Inside Stories, came in. When the clients moved in, they had a few pieces of furniture they liked, Winter says. They had a beautiful home, and the things they had already done provided a great framework. The homeowners actually liked color, so they wanted to update with furniture and paint and wall coverings and beams, things to make it feel more like their personality. The first step, Winter gave the clients a rigorous questionnaire to figure out what design elements they were and were not drawn to. Through that, Winter was able to pinpoint their style, which she calls transitional eclectic modern. One revealing thing the homeowners mentioned was that they felt particularly 
inspired by two favorite hotels, the one and only Palmilla Resort in Los Cabos at the tip of the Baja California Sur Peninsula and the Hotel Jerome in Aspen. The one and only Palmilla, says the homeowner, is special because it's where the couple went after their wedding. It's this classic old Hispanic hotel with these rich colors and a lot of warmth and texture, she says. And the Jerome, it's kind of crazy. It's really moody and it has some really funky, dark, edgy pieces, but we find it really comfortable and welcoming. Knowing the couple loved those two places was great news for winter. It meant they were not afraid to be bold and take chances. We loved that, Winter says. It made this a really fun project to play with. The main floor refresh was done in two phases. First, the living room, dining room, office, and piano room. Second, the kitchen, breakfast, nook, and powder. The Inside Stories team worked by presenting the homeowners with three tiers of budget for each space, which allows the client the opportunity to weigh in on their tolerance for spend. Once that groundwork was done, Winter got to designing. Throughout the process, the clients felt that Winter understood the vibe they were after. We trusted her a lot, says the homeowner. So when Lauren came in with her presentations, we'd eliminate one or two things. But overall, she had a vision and we trusted it. The results speak for themselves. When Lauren put up all the pictures, filled the nooks, and did all the extra touches, it made the house look beautiful, the homeowner says. She was able to add a lot of layers as well as depth and color by bringing in different patterns. The plan is not to have to ever redo this house again. Maybe we'd put some lipstick on the house down the road, but we're basically done. And that is very good news indeed. Winter Festivals, What to Do Across the State, January 21 to 23. I read to the Pagosa Springs Winter Fest for an activity-packed weekend, complete with hot air balloon, mass extension, sled races, a fat tire bike race, the ever-popular penguin plunge, and much more. Tickets required for some events. P-A-G-O-S-A chamber dot com Winter Fest. January 13th to 16th. Now in its 71st year, Aspen's Winter Skull, literally a toast to winter, is an eclectic four-day festival for the whole family. Traditional events across town on all four mountains include a snow sculpture competition, canine fashion show, torchlight parade on Aspen Mountain, a fireworks extravaganza, and more. Admission is free. Aspenchamber.org slash events slash winter skull. January 24th to 30th. Larger than life snow sculptures take center stage at the Breckenridge International Snow Sculpture Championships as teams from around the world work to transform 20 ton blocks of snow into frosty masterpieces. View teams in action January 24th to 28th and the finished products January 28th to 30th. Free and open to the public. GoBreck.com forward slash event forward slash international dash snow dash sculpture dash championships february 12th february 12th sample sweets from the region's finest chocolatiers taste pours from a variety of wineries and enjoy a romantic weekend at the estes park wine and chocolate festival full price tickets forty dollars per person seventy dollars per couple include chocolate sampling complimentary pours and a souvenir wine glass and tote bag estes park events complex dot com February 25th to 26th, enjoy scrumptious gumbo made by professional chefs and amateur cooks as they compete in the Mumbo Jumbo Gumbo Cook-Off in Manitou Springs. Low price tastings at 11 a.m. are followed by the annual Carnivale Parade in downtown Manitou Springs at 1 p.m. Admission ranges from $1 to $30. ManitouSprings.org February 25th to 27th. Celebrate winter with three days of authentic bluegrass music and Colorado craft beer at the Winter Wonder Grass Festival in Steamboat Springs, featuring 20 Colorado craft breweries, more than 25 bands, and a colorful kids' zone with face painting, 
hula hooping, and crafts. Tickets from $159 to $399. Under 12 and over 75 free. Steamboatchamber.com forward slash events forward slash annual dash events. Winter Wondergrass. Thank you for joining us for the January-February 2022 issue of Colorado Homes and Lifestyles magazine. My name is Jerry Jangra. You've been listening to Colorado Homes and Lifestyles, where style comes home. If you enjoyed this program, please register for our free services at www.aftersight.org or by calling 303-786-7777.